Hello again. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about putting together the handheld BMO Boy system. Um, this one is 3D printed. Uh, almost everything is 3D printed on this. And there's a couple of ways to do it. This has been printed in uh, ABS in as close colors I could find to BMO. Uh, there's two ways to do it. You can either just print it in a color and leave it or print it in a neutral color and then paint it. Uh, I, I prefer the painting mechanism. I think it winds up looking a lot more finished. I hate post finishing ABS or any 3D print. It's a horrible experience. Um, but that being said, this is a fairly close match to the BMO color. Uh, I say uh, ABS filament that is made by a company called Gizmo Dorks. It's their teal. It's the closest BMO match I could find. Uh, if you want to use um, pop vinyl as sort of a comparison, it's it's a little bit lighter, so it's it's close enough in in my mind. Um, the the other mechanism I use is just print it in a natural color. I, I prefer natural, not white. I, I think putting in um, coloring uh, affects the way uh, you can you can post finish it, especially when you use acetone finishing. The other option is you can print in, in PLA. Uh, I, I hate printing in PLA. It's I find post finishing it to be awful. Stuff melts as soon as you start to put any aggressive sanding on it. But it's up to you. Uh, my again, my favorite way of doing it is printing in natural and then painting it. Uh, if you're serious about 3D printing, that's what you do anyways. You don't rely on the printer to give you a finished product. So in this case, I actually painted it. I think it's a better match of color. Actually, I think this is a closer color. For the cartoon than this is. I think this is a little greener. I, I actually found this paint online from a company and I checked against the um, production drawings for BMO and this paint is like within 1% of the, of the color when I compare them in Photoshop. So out of the can I think this looks the best. I also like the finish of the paint. I think it gives it kind of a almost a metallic feel to it. A lot of people actually think this is metal when they see it, so it's up to you. I, I, I've already done this. I'll document how you paint this later because I've already done that. I'm just going to stick with the off the printer one and go with that. So the first step I got to do is fill in. There's a lot of little holes in here that can be you use these heat press inserts with. That's because you got a lot of screws to hold things in, and there's three screw points in the front to hold the button board in. Uh, that's the back panel for these buttons. There's some on the side here to hold in the servo. That's it. He has servo actuated arms, so I can actually screw screw in a servo in there and it'll stay in pretty tightly so that's what the side ones are for and there's three on the bottom here for mounting the on off switch back panel and um, the back panel itself is here it has a little compartment for holding the battery and then that gets held in place with this, which holds the power booster, which takes this, this is only 3.7 volt battery, jumps it up to uh, 5.25 volts, which is pretty handy. And that'll screw on there. So I got to put in these heat press inserts in all those holes. Um, so this just came off the printer. I like to print with a raft. Uh, specifically high impact polystyrene is what I use for my rest. One reason I like using ABS because uh, this HIPS filament sticks to the ABS really well while printing. And it also unsticks pretty easily just like that. I mean it pulls the supports and everything clean off of there. And to me that's 
perfect. Uh, that's the way a raft should disengage. So that's why I like using the hips for that. And that looks, that looks pretty good. If I was really, really a perfectionist for this particular build, I would sand this down and hit it with acetone and smooth it out. Um, that's just a lot of work right now. If I was going to go through that much trouble, I'd probably sand and acetone this and then paint it. But it's up to you. Um, so let's start putting in the inserts. The inserts are important for this thing. To do that, I just use my soldering station here. Turn on the lowest possible heat it'll do. And these are uh, two point M2.5 uh, threaded inserts. So I use these M2.5 screws for that. So there's four here and there's four there. And the reason for that threading is one for the screws and to mount the pie on the back I use these standoffs. So let's put them in. So you just, again, you want to not use too much heat because it'll, it'll just go right through this plastic. Get this cord out of the way. Okay. You just grab one, just kind of hold it in position, and then kind of let the weight of your hand just push it in slowly. You don't want to go too aggressively. And then it's in. Kind of want something to help you hold it in, otherwise it'll tend to want to pop right back out. Now, even at its lowest setting, this can get pretty hot, so sometimes you want to turn it off and cool down a little bit. Now that would be for this boost converter thing here. And I would use these um, M2.5 screws. And that would hold the battery in. I'll just put a couple in and test it. So that's the way that's supposed to work. Um, Now those are for these standoffs. There we go, that's the back. Now to hold the back on, um, I need to put in the corner ones. And those are much smaller. I'm going to use M1.6.
Cool. All right. Let's see how this holds on. So we're going to use 1.6. They are not very big. going pretty easily. Alright, so the back panel will come on and off easily enough now. Let's remove that for now. Still got these ones to deal with. These are a little tricky because you can't go straight down, so you got to come in at a little bit of an angle. Just come in from the side and kind of push them down in. Those three should be seated. Um, I'm going to see what that's for. That's where this little control board will live. When you're trying to get into a tight space like that, you are going to need some very short screwdrivers. Which is why I like the threaded inserts because it makes putting that in much easier. This is just to show you how what all that's for. And I'll go into more detail on this later. But that's the little back panel that gets held in with those inserts and then it all comes to the on off switch back there you got your LED indicators and your access ports so that's why I like to use those inserts to make assembly like that a lot easier Okay, a couple of other things uh, as far as printing. Um, I, I 3D printed his legs uh, just in, in gray. Then they just kind of rotate in like that. And then you can have a sitting BMO. And then I 3D printed again the arms in color, and those would attach to the servos. Uh, again, we're going to. Talk about that later um, on how that works. As far as the legs, though, uh, there are alternate legs. You can have standing legs as well if you don't want them sitting down all the time. So those would just rock in and lock into place as well. And now there are four buttons I printed out, and these are all printed out in ABS as well and they have a little um, indent in the back for a tiny little spring which we'll talk about um, just 
springs are tricky things and the springs you need for these are hard to find and they're not exactly cheap finicky little thing but it, it works when it's all together so for now that's how the main body is made and uh, we'll continue later with how the entire thing is put together including how these circuit boards are built and how the whole power system works for this so uh, if you want to see more um, subscribe to the channel it helps support the channel and I can keep this thing going and um, we'll talk about more in the uh, next edition thanks